Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for having me in the beautiful city of London. So I have a lot to say, and less than 20 minutes to say it, so I'll try to be quick. So I start by talking about who sell lanties, what problem you're trying to solve in Africa, what digital marketplaces we are building, what problem we are solving, and talk a little bit about how New Relic has helped us in our journey to become uh, the payment platform for choice in Africa. So um, we are a company operating in about 11 countries. Actually, that's a bit dated. We added a couple more this year, mainly to expand into French speaking and North Africa. Uh, about 400 staff. Uh, but what do we do? So actually, <laughs> we did a lot of things, to be frank. So we started as a company that was essentially selling ringback tones for mobile subscribers about 15 years ago. And because we were so small and the mobile operators were so big, we needed to find a way to get paid at the same time that subscribers were getting paid. This whole thing of the provider getting paid and paying us later was not quite working out. So in trying to do that, we actually evolved and developed a digital wallet. It was basically a wallet that could allow a bank to talk to a mobile ecosystem. And this was way before mobile systems or mobile money systems are what they are today. And we looked at this product and realized, OK, this product, we build it for ourselves, but a lot of banks we we'll actually begin to see the promise that mobile has in Africa as being a way of being able to interact with consumers and being able to interact with customers. And so we began to evolve and created a payment system. Um, and what we're really trying to solve is how do you pay? So I came into London yesterday morning. It never occurred to me that I needed pounds. Um, I jumped out of the plane, I was late, I needed to get to the hotel, freshen up, and I swiped my card, got a ticket, got on the train, and it wasn't until later that I realized that in none of my interactions did anybody ask me who issued your card, is it in pounds, is it in Kenya shillings? Well, if you're going to come to Africa, do not try that, because we have so many different ways of, pays, of paying. Some people take cards. Some people pay bank accounts. Some people pay with mobile money. And a lot of people pay by cash. And that's a problem because cash has its risks. Cash has its costs. And I'll take you through some of the use cases that we are solving within Africa to basically organize marketplaces by decashing the value system. So one of our brands is the Ting brand. And what we've actually been doing is to provide a digital platform where people can, first of all, pay their bills. Now, we do have a use case where one of our customers, who's a utility company, we built for them a digital platform so that their customers can pay for water. After a couple of months, they shut down their brick and mortar offices because there was really no need for them. In the words of the CFO, he said, you know, when we're a bit broke, we call Cellulant, we tell them, hey, you know how many people owe us money, just send them a text message. And all they do is send a text message and everybody goes to their phones and pays via our technology. And in his words, he was saying it was almost like magic because this solution works while he's asleep, it works when he's outside of the office, and by creating a digital platform, you reduce the friction with which people are trying to pay. Um, this is the last slide, I promise, about us, and then we'll talk a little bit about technology. So we are basically an ecosystem business. We talk to merchants, we talk to banks. We believe um, that Africa by itself has about 700 million addressable customers. Today, we're only reaching 140 million. So let's talk a little bit about technology. So as a company, we have grown by being the first on the table. Um, one of the other use cases that we have done is providing disbursements of funds to farmers. Uh, and this one was specific to Liberia and Nigeria. 
where the agricultural sector was collapsing. And even though there was a lot of aid being given, some of it by your governments, um, it wasn't actually getting to the farmers. Only about 10 or 14% was arriving there. But by digitizing it and making sure that there is enough KYC in the platform and there is visibility, today we have disbursed about a billion dollars of value to about 17 million plus farmers. But this came at a cost. When you're building quickly and when features is all you care about, then you're gonna run into a problem. And in 2007, you had this conversation with us. He was really, really concerned. Are we able to scale 10X? And we went like, huh? Because all we were doing that time was just creating features, integrating into various marketplaces. And he was very concerned that the company was gonna sign a deal with somebody who was gonna increase our traffic by 10 times. And he was very, very concerned that our technology was gonna break and we we're gonna chase these people away. So we did begin changing our great monolith. We began using a message-driven, event-driven architecture. We did deploy a minimum viable product in 2018, that's last year. And what we actually saw was a 20, 30% organic growth. And we always had this suspicion that in some markets, we are the only way to pay, but our customers were not happy. They paid, but they were sort of like doing it because they don't have a choice. And then in April, um, now I don't know how many in the room are product managers. Uh, you forgive me for saying this. So a couple of product guys decided we need to launch a campaign. <laughs> they didn't tell technology, they did it anyway. And so many people came into our ecosystem to buy prepaid airtime because there was an offer of getting 50% free. And basically our systems just crashed. And that was the first time in the company we realized that if we did not give attention to other non-functional requirements other than features, we we're gonna fail. So it was about that time, really, we began building for the cloud and began having conversations with New Relic. We met New Relic uh, at the AWS Summit in Cape Town. And I have to admit, it was a very skeptical meeting. Now, being a startup using open source software, we have this saying about big technology that you pay 100% of the price, but you only get 20% of the value. Now, I'll not name who the big tech are. So we're very skeptical. Is New Relic really gonna work for us? But anyway, we got persuaded to do a proof of value, a proof of concept, because we were very clear on some of the features that we actually wanted to see when we migrated to the cloud. And we really wanted to first baseline where we are. And some of the challenges we are beginning to have is that because we are in the payments market, sometimes you have a problem that only exists for a couple of hours, and then it's gone. The system is not down but the system is degraded. And all we can tell is that people came into the ecosystem, didn't have a good experience, and left. So it was very important for us to be able to baseline where exactly we were. Well, so we did our first big cloud deployment in May this year. And really, I'll just drill down some of the things that we're able to do. We were able to increase our TPS or our throughput by 15 times. We were able to lower latency by a factor of three or 300%. And this is very critical because you're not gonna wait forever for a payment. You're not gonna wait for Cellulant to get its act together to be able to pay. And what we saw with our business is that volumes come in waves. The last week of the month, everybody is get paid, everybody wants to pay their bills. The first week of the month, the same. The next two weeks, not so much. So the ability to handle peak load is very critical for us as a business. So what are our challenges? So I've already mentioned the first one. We're an ecosystem business. What does that mean? We rely on somebody else's API, both to send us the traffic to fulfill and to fulfill the payment. So because of that, visibility is very critical because if something is degraded, if something is down, and we don't act fast enough, we lose opportunities to make money. 
Then the other thing about our system was that because of the way it had grown, it was complex, it was legacy, it had high technical debt. And we needed to have visibility across all these tiers, our infrastructure, whether it's on-premise and cloud, our applications. And at that time, we had begun building out our microservices-based architecture. But we needed to have visibility between the legacy, the new, and third-party applications, and essentially third-party APIs. Then we really needed to understand service. Because when we evolved our business, from working predominantly with banks, like a B2B business, and went to retail, those were harsh lessons for us. So when you have a problem with a bank, a bank calls you, hey, George, you know, your API is slowed down. Uh, look at it. Please try and fix it. Great. We'll open a ticket. We'll look at the SLA. We'll fix it. Now, in retail, when there's a problem, nobody calls you. They don't say anything. They just vote with their wallets. You may get one or two nasty comments on Twitter and Facebook, but that's it. And then in the morning, I'm with product people. We dropped 5,000 users last night. I'm like, how? There's no ticket. So for us, user experience became so critical. And the ability to quantify that 20 30% was very, very critical for us to grow, especially now that we began putting a consumer up. I started working at the consumer side of the business to grow our revenues. Then lastly, we needed to see what is the impact to the business. Um, it was very important for us to sort of like be able to say, how does this impact shillings and cents, so to speak? So our desired outcomes are out there with three things that we really wanted to achieve when we went to the new platform. One being to lower mean time to resolution, to lower application latency, and to increase throughput. Now, for mean time to resolution, that was critical because <laughs> we had this, for lack of better English, headless chicken runs when something went wrong. So depending on who was on the service desk, they decided, okay, I'll tell the application guy, I'll tell the database guy, I'll tell the infrastructure guy, and just to throw the kitchen sink and everything else, we'll also call the DevOps guy because we really do not know what is wrong. We could not pinpoint why is the service degraded. So in terms of creating the end-to-end -end visibility, really, it's first of all, we need to get a consolidated view on what's happening on our infrastructure. What's our capacity on our infrastructure, whether it's on cloud, whether it's on premise. Um, then secondly, and this is really what won us over, is to be able to tell in real time what has broken. And now we have a different conversation with developers. We're not telling them, hey, look, your code is slow. We tell them, look, this line of your code is slow. And for me, it was pretty surprising because when the developers saw it, they were like, oh, 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 they sort of like realized what they had done. And now they're seeing it live and in production. And even for them, fixing it. And then looking at that same graph and realizing, OK, I fixed it. It was very gratifying for them to be able to tell that they are now fixing problems. They're able to see the state before and after. Then lastly, we actually got some science to a hypothesis about frustrated customers, really using the app decks. That we're able to tell, are they frustrated? Are they happy? Are they satisfied? Or are they just tolerating because they really don't have a choice? And lastly, it's just a dashboard to say, how is our revenue? Did it grow? Is it down? Is it going up? So in summary, <laughs> we did have this customer. I actually don't know the technical term for them. I think it's a customer success engineer. They did come to help us in our journey. And the guy was very passionate about what he really wanted to do and how to help us develop the insights that we wanted. And I remember one interaction. The gentleman actually had the gumption to send us a score sheet. And I was like, really? We're the ones paying the bill. Why are you giving me a score sheet? <laughs> yeah? But it was really to give us visibility of where we needed to go on a maturity basis to move from being reactive to being proactive. 
And really, by them holding our hands, we're able to get a lot more out of this platform than we would have if all they did was just send us logins, tell us install the agents, and figure it out. So what have we achieved? 50% lower mean time to resolution. We're able to get alerts that give us early warning signs of degradation. Like everybody else, we are happy that they integrate with Slack because email, personally, I'm looking for the day when we will move away from email. We just have too much email. No more headless chicken runs. I already talked about them. Crisp conversations. We don't sugarcoat them. It's crisp. Now, I'll give you an example. People think that everybody in Kenya can run because Kenya has produced a lot of marathoners. But it's not actually true, and I'm one of them. So when I wanted to run, um, you know, I was put on a scale, and the doctor was very polite. He said, you know, you have a bit of girth that you need to get rid of. He didn't say I'm fat, you know. And then he said, you know, you need to work on your core, you know. And I was like thinking, what's the core? He, he was politely trying to tell me, you, you're too flabby to run. You need to, you know, tighten up, bulk up. Now, we don't have those kind of conversations. We have crisp conversations with developers where we say our target is 200 milliseconds for queries. Yours is four milliseconds. Why? And because we have this tool that is used both by operations and developers, it's crisp. They look at it and say, OK, I know what's wrong with this. We need to index that table, or we need to do this. Or in some cases, we just need to do away with the query. We've lowered the cost of infrastructure. Uh, we no longer just throw resources at the problem. Um, when we couldn't really figure out what was wrong, we said, you know what, we are on AWS. Just increase the RAM, increase the CPU, and let's see how it behaves for the next two days. Uh, we don't do that now anymore. We show people where the problems are, fix the root cost. I already talked about the 3x reduction in latency and TPS improvement, and the visibility on software faults. And lastly, for us, was just a simplified observability stack. It doesn't matter whether it was a legacy platform that was a database-based monolith. It doesn't matter whether it's new, this new platform using Spring Boot, Micrometer, Prometheus-style metrics. It doesn't matter whether it's our mobile app. We have one platform that simplifies how we do observability. So, that's it from me. Thank you very much for your attention, and thank you for having me.